If you've seen any of my videos, you will know how much I love the frameworks felt. And in my opinion, it is a much better framework than React in all ways except for one. React has TRPC. There have been attempts to make a TRPC for Svelte and even a TRPC Svelte adapter, and they haven't solved the problems in the same way the React versions have. The React TRPC experience is really one of a kind. I absolutely love it. RPC functions are, in my opinion, the future of the web. I still do not really understand why, for full stack TypeScript projects, we are doing non-type safe fetch requests when we could be doing RPC functions. It just, it makes so much more sense. And luckily the Svelte team agreed because we are now getting RPC functions built into SvelteKit and I, oh, it is going to be glorious. So first and foremost, why are we doing this? Many of you who have used Svelte before will know that Svelte already has some answers to these problems. In Svelte, typically whenever you're building a project, you're going to have your page.server.ts, which will map to a page.svelte. You'll do const data equals dollar props to get down the data from your load function within the page.server.ts. Then whenever you're on your page and you maybe need to submit a form or something like that, you will then use a form action to post some data to the server, run some backend logic, and then maybe run an invalidate on the load function to update your page.svelte. This is good on paper, but in practice, this just has a lot of problems. For one, the type safety on this is awful. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. There have been a lot of attempts over the years to rectify this. The most successful one has been Superforms, and Superforms is a cool library. I've tried it a couple times, but for me personally, it's just too heavy. I love the way mutations work in TRPC, where it's basically just calling a function with React Query onto your backend with full type safety. That's what I've really wanted out of Svelte Kit. I don't want to have to define a schema and then return something from my load functions, hook all this stuff up. I, I just, I don't want to deal with that. I just want to call functions. And that's what Svelte's remote functions are finally doing. Before we talk about the remote functions, it is worth mentioning asynchronous Svelte. This is something that I've wanted to make a video on for like two weeks now, but every time I go to make a video, something new happens with it, something new comes out, I learn something new. But asynchronous Svelte, for those of you who haven't seen it, is basically making it so that we can now use the await keyword in Svelte in your script tags and inside of your derived expressions. And if you look at some of the examples they have in here, the first one is this await get weather forecast within our markup. What's really cool about this is get weather forecast could be like an asynchronous fetch call to our backend to grab the current weather and then we just drop this right in our markup. I'm 50-50 on how I feel about this to be completely honest with you. I think error handling on this would be a little weird. Uh, I guess you could put an error boundary around it. There's, there's a lot of questions on this, but the biggest one here is putting an await within a derive. What's really cool about this is whenever X changes, this whole thing will be rerun, which means that foo will be called again and we'll get a new value of A. This very clearly would allow us to create a React query type thing, which is basically what the Svelte team has done. They have introduced remote functions and oh, I, I know I said this at the beginning, but I just, I have to dwell on this. I've wanted this for so long. This is so damn exciting to me. This is going to make Svelte go from like, in my opinion, the best way to build things. It just feels better. It's, I like the state management better than React. I like Svelte Kit way better than XJS. Don't even get me started on that. But this is just gonna take it from good to by far the best. The only way I would ever wanna build anything because now all of our backend work can just be functions. We just define queries, we define form actions, we define commands, and it just works. This post is really, really great. I will have it linked down below. I highly recommend reading through all of it. I'm not gonna do that here because if I do, this will be an hour and a half long video, which no one probably wants to sit through right now but they give a really good background into why they're doing this, a really good, um, a quick call out on the asynchronous Svelte stuff, the requirements for what they built, and finally, the examples of what these will actually be. The first one they're introducing is a query. In this first query example they give, it's just get likes, we're defining a query, which is an asynchronous function that takes in an ID of string, which means that we now have strong type safety on what these will take in. We can go in here, we can do our backend SQL statement here because these these are run on the server. And then we return our row.likes. And within our component here, we can just do likes is await get likes. And we have our data right here. They are also replacing form actions with the form, which again takes in an asynchronous function. The data is form data. We can grab our ID out of our form data. We can run our SQL statement and then we can return some data. One of my biggest pain points with form actions in the past was that these weren't type safe. It was really hard to get type safety out of the result. Optimistic updates were a little bit annoying. Stuff like invalidating was really annoying. I, just, I, I didn't like how they felt. 
this feels a hundred times better. You can see the way we use these is we can just define our form here. We can spread our add like on here. And then we are basically just defining a form with no JavaScript. But if we want to define a form with JavaScript, we can use the progressive enhancement, which is something that I know not ev everyone loves. I personally really like because it effectively like, I'm not a zero JS guy. I respect the grind for wanting to ship as little JavaScript to the client as humanly possible. It makes your site more usable in more places. But generally speaking, I'm fine with having JS and for the things I want to build, I will almost always want to have JS to make it feel better. And with progressive enhancement, this basically just allows us to do that in a really nice way. We spread our ad like out here, we do dot enhance on it, and then we have our submit function for actually running it. We can also do some stuff like uh, doing a refresh on our get likes. We can also do an error toast down here. Just allows us to make our thing a bit more dynamic and give a better user experience. Another thing that's really cool is on the server, we can do this await get likes within our form, uh, within our form action here, which will make it so that we get a single flight mutation, which basically means that in one network hop, we are running our ad like, and we are also fetching, we are also refetching get likes in one network hop. So instead of having to do a network hop for ad like, getting our data back on the client, then doing another network hop to get the likes again. All of that is done in a single flight, which is really, really important for keeping your network calls down and also improving the performance of your app. All of this is just built in. I'll show you an example of this in a little bit. It's really, really cool. We also have command, which is just a general way to write data to the server, kind of just like a general post request type thing. You can use it on the client with just like an await add like. Uh, personally, I can see myself using this one a lot. I like the form actions, but I don't always want to be limited to just a form. Sometimes I just want an on click on a button to do something. This will be a great way to do that. We also have the pre-render function for stuff like um, uh, getting build time data and also having stuff like ISR, incremental static revalidation, where every X number of minutes we want to rerun this thing really useful for something like insider viz the site i built a while back where we only want to update our data every five minutes and it would be great for users to hit a cache pre-render is one of the best ways to do that optimistic updates are also being done in a very first class way where we have our get likes function here and whenever we do get likes dot override this will override our get likes call here um, on the client so that until we release it the value of get likes will now become n plus one. So we can do our ad like, and then once that's done, we can release it. The server, the single flight mutation will run to update this value and everything will be in sync and you get a really nice experience there. They also are building in a really good system for validation where we can pass in a schema to our query so that we will always have type safety guaranteed on this. If the ID is called with bad arguments, it will result in a 422. And they have a way for us to handle getting the request event. So we can do, we can grab our cookies, our locals, all the different things that we would have in the current implementation of load functions and form actions. We just call get request event within the function and we've got it. Joy of Code, another phenomenal Svelte YouTuber, had put together this little Svelte RPC example. I'll have this link down below. This is not ready to be used yet at all. Normally I'm the kind of guy who the second something's in an alpha, I will jump into shipping it in prod. This one is still not at the point where like you should do that yet. We're doing some weird stuff with packages in order to get uh, the local build working to even test this out. Don't use these yet. They are not ready. I will make a video when they are ready, but for now, I just wanted to show off what these are looking like. And if you want a real world example of how these can be used, go check out this repo and also check out his channel. He's phenomenal. And when these come out, probably the best tutorial video on how to use them will come from him. The example itself is just a to-do app. Uh, we can go in here, add in some data, add that, and then it will be added to our list. We can delete it. This is doing weird stuff because again, this is super early. It's a little buggy, not again, not ready to be used, but we can kind of see the vision on how these are going to work. If I go into my code here, I've been screwing around with this a lot. You can see all the nonsense I've been doing over here. I'll have many videos in the future about the horrible and beautiful things I end up doing with this. I'm, I'm so excited. Um, but basically the way this works is now within our page.svelte, instead of having a load function, which would get the to do's like the way we used to do it, we can do const to do's equals get to do's. And now our to do's will be a promise of to do with all of these extra things on there. We can get the current value. We can get the error state. We can get the pending state. We can get the refresh and we can get the override. Again, if you've ever used react query before, this is really, really similar. And it's just, 
in the framework as a first class citizen. I, oh, I love this so much. Down here within the markup, we can go ahead and again, since we're using async svelte, the thing we start, talked about earlier, we can do await to do's as to do's. And then down in here, we're gonna do, we're gonna grab the remove function. This is just like a useful thing we have built into svelte. It's a little magical and I know not everyone's gonna love this, but we can basically just create a remove function here, which is delete to do for to do.id. And this delete to do is a, again, a remote function. We can run through, do all our markup here. And also I wanna show off the uh, actual get to do's function because it's really nice. Uh, this is the to do's.remote.ts function where we're defining all the ways we can interface with our to do's. It's an example app. We're just have an array of to do's on the server. And then in get to do's, we're just doing a simulated like slow network request here. I'm testing out the event stuff and then returning the array of to do's. And then we have our add to do function here. Very simple, just grabbing our text out of our input, making sure it's there. We're pushing it into our array. And then what we talked about earlier, those single flight mutations, we're doing await get to do's dot refresh. And what this means is if we go over here, I'm going to uh, inspect element, go into my network tab, and then if we go in here and I just add some random stuff and I hit add, you'll see we are running this request here. If we look here at the response from this, you'll see that we are we have an array of refreshes here. We are refreshing the get to do's thing with new data, which means that now in one network hop instead of two, like you would have probably had to do in the past where you do your form action and then you call and invalidate, Everything is just done in one round trip. We also have our delete to do function here. We have a little command in here, here for toggling the to do. And then you can see on the client, everything is just like calling functions. We're doing our optimistic update here by overriding the to do's. Then we're going in here and we're toggling it on the server and then we're refetching it and then we're refreshing it. And then finally we're releasing the over override because we've already done the refresh. So we don't want the current state of the get to do's to be the thing we overrided. I've really been thinking for a while now that the future of full stack web development is RPC functions and Svelte is the framework that I think is doing these the best. In Next.js, still the best way to handle most of that stuff is TRPC. Even though they do have some answers for this with server components, and I, I forget what they call them. I think they're server actions is what they call them over there. They have answers for these things, but the way Svelte is doing it is the way I would have wanted to do it. A couple of weeks ago, I tried to go through and build out something similar to this. I got pretty far and it was a whole thing. I really need to make a dedicated video about that. I've recorded it once, but it's just, it, it was such a hellish chaotic thing that uh, we'll get there eventually. This is the future. This feels really, really good. I don't know when this will be released. I have no real inside information on this. Just, I, it's going to be awesome. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, and subscribe. I will have tons more to say about this as this gets closer to releasing, hopefully later this year. And yeah, 